No, take him. He's more important. I've got to stop them. I'll hold them back. Go, I'll catch up. It looks like I'm going to have to use all the brains available to me. I'll take off my helmet. Yes, taking off my helmet and removing that will make me a better shot. Yes. Wait, if I stand up, I might get a better shot. Would it be prudent, though, to remove my bulletproof jacket? Yes! Ha-ha! <laughs> now I've got you! Prepare to... Hello, I'm Parlor Gorilla, and I review Mormon movies. So as you can tell, there's... Not a lot to say about them, except they suck. But to be fair, on occasion there is one or two that, while not amazing, not Oscar worthy, they're still worth watching once. And that brings us to Saints and Soldiers. Now, to be fair, this is one of those Mormon movies that actually tries not to be a Mormon movie. And for that reason, it works really well. That does not, however, preclude it from me making fun of it. So, let's get on with the ripping. This is Saints and Soldiers. Welcome to Malmody. 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 Where we kill everyone in sight. Here is Medic Goob. No, that's his last name. I'm not making a joke. That's his last name. Gould. You know, G-O-U-L-D. Never mind. And what crime has he committed to make me make fun of him? Look at the man! It looks like he has an eyeliner coming out of his nostrils. Why are his eyes bugging out like that? How did you put that much eyeliner on him? And here's our hero of the story. The Mormon, I, I mean... The very religious deacon. No, no, we don't confirm he's Mormon. He could be any type of Christian. No, really! Watch the film. No, really. <laughs> no, he could be Mormon, but he could not be Mormon. <laughs> Meine Frau. You are the what? Meine Frau. Well, what did he just say? Do you speak Deutsch? Yeah. Bitte. Because regardless of which World War II film you're watching, we have to establish that the Germans are terrible. I need that. All of these unarmed American prisoners, they're taking all of their stuff, and they find the one guy who brought a Bible to a gunfight. This, of course, must be Kirby Hayborn, I mean. He's the Mormon actor we all know. He must be the star of this film. <laughs> Sorry, my nose is itchy. But then the Americans have had enough of the Germans, so they start <laughs> trying to revolt. And most of them get killed. How much longer can we hold on this dead guy? Yes, we know he's dead. We saw at the beginning he's dead and buried in, in the snow. We saw he's dead. Quit dragging it out! And then we have four survivors. Sarge, the leader. Deacon, the man who brought a Bible to a gunfight, Gold, the medic, and whatever the fat guy's name is, I don't know, Hendrix! <laughs> uh, no, unfortunately, not Jimi Hendrix. You're, you're about 20 years too early for that.
They've got one gun with four rounds, and they need to find shelter. We gotta get out of here and find shelter before it turns dark. Thank you, Sarge. I couldn't have figured that out myself. We gotta get out of here. Deacon, you gotta get a point. Thank you, Sarge. I couldn't have figured that out. You repeated yourself! Who wrote this? Don't worry, Deacon. It's not grave robbing if they have no grave yet. Here, have this dead man's blanket. I'm sure whatever he had was not catching. Get him. I found some key rations. And? Some dummy took all the cigarettes out. Uh, pardon me, Hendrix, but, uh, we're behind enemy lines. I think you have more important problems than taking a cigarette break! Creepy doll! <laughs> Disturbed one is the only one holding a gun, but freezes when he needs to shoot an enemy. Yep, he's dead. Come on, <laughs> even if you believe in an afterlife, what is he going to need with a watch there? Why would you need a watch in heaven? Hey, Sarge, what's the deal with Deacon? I'll give you three guesses. He brought a Bible to a gunfight freezes when he needs to shoot unarmed enemies, and is in a Mormon produced movie. Take your pick! Deke has saved my ass more times than I care to think about. He's fine. Besides which, he's Kirby Hayborn in a Mormon produced film. There's no way he's going to kill us. Starting a beer commercial later on in life, maybe, but kill us, not happening. He's from some little backwards town in Arizona because that's so much less obvious than saying he's from Utah. We can't be too obvious with this. How about you, Gold? Where are you from? No, don't tell me. Don't tell me. New York. <laughs> of course. Of course. Gould, the unspiritual, practical, realist grave robber, is from New York. After they find shelter, they find out that Germans use it also, so they have to hide under the floorboards. Also, can I just mention, Gould saves their lives these times. He's the one who found that hole in the floorboards. He's the one who helped them get down there. Gould, the atheist, saves everyone in a Christian film. Actually, that's quite nice of them. That's much better than I thought they were going to do. Okay, we're just gonna hide under the floorboards and pray no one farts. After that, they meet a British parachuter, who accuses them of being Germans, even though they're obviously American. Okay. Five problems with this. How did the German Jeep miss a screaming British parachuter? How did these Americans behind him in lines with no intelligence or communications manage to find him? How does saving your life and not shooting you make them enemies? They are speaking perfect American English with an American accent with no German accent. There is no way they are German. How are the third and fourth U.S. presidents your way of knowing Americans from Germans? Have you seen our test scores? And he takes over their little operation to survive to go find the Allies because he has very important information about how the Battle of the Bulge will commence. So, you're probably wondering why couldn't we just give it to a pigeon and mail it to the Allies? Well, they're not sure where the nearest Allied post is, and the British man writes really sloppily. Yes, only the British man can read his own writing. That's job security for you. We're soldiers. We're dirty and muddy and... Ooh! I can't get my boots wet! Quick! Around the puddle! You're German. Where'd you pick it up? Oh, in Berlin. What are you doing there? You in the school or something? No, I was a missionary. It's confirmed! He's Mormon! Probably. <laughs> so, will it? Where'd you say you were from, exactly? I'm British, so I'm a jerk to Americans. 
<laughs> I invented shmami. <laughs> um, it's... Hmm. Forget I asked. Here's our British parachuter, played by ah, uh, who cares, me. <laughs> it's not like it's Kirby Hayborn or anything. <laughs> I should be home right now. Flirting with the girl in my dad's store. Forgot her name. Well, you better remember it quick, otherwise this movie is going to appear awfully chauvinistic. Should be helping my wife get ready for the baby. Wait a second. The Mormon, I mean Christian, has a wife at home who's due. Oh yeah, there's no way he's going to die. January 18th. It's my birthday. I know. What? Sarge's birthday is January the 18th, the same as the kid that his wife is going to have? Does that mean Sarge is going to die? Maybe. I mean, it's not like we're foreshadowing it or setting it up for that kind of an effect, is it? We haven't made it too obvious, have we? So good. What's your secret? What? And judging by the ridiculous eyeliner you're wearing, I can make several embarrassing guesses. I never kissed my wife till the day we were married. All right, Deacon. Okay. Even by Mormon standards, that's just stupid. Never mind. But I actually got it because I got beat up by Alice Poliski. Sarge got beat. By a girl. <laughs> all right, all right, I got one. Ooh, I want to know what the British man's secret is. So, Wendy, what's your secret, huh? Greek, you think I'm telling you, chaps? I've just barely met you. Cop out! <laughs> Tell me a song. A song. Hey. Talk to me. All right.